Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of our program, Jones and Company. On this program, every weekend we discuss the national issues of the Bahamas and uh, we are happy that you are able to join us. There are a whole lot of issues in the news and um, if you listen to radio or read newspapers, you would see the government is moving ahead on something in the Grand Bahama, a cruise port, and then on the negative side, uh, they're talking about issues of corruption. Uh, there is also the issue of fiscal responsibility, uh, among other things. And then, of course, uh, in foreign affairs, uh, the government has taken a certain position on Venezuela. All of these issues we want to talk about today. Uh, our guest on the program is the Honorable Fred Mitchell, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigration. He's now the Chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party. It's a pleasure to have him as our guest today. Mr. Mitchell, welcome. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, thank yes. you. I'm pleased to be here. Good yes. to see you both. Godfrey, nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, you know, we read uh, many uh, press statements coming from you almost on a weekly basis. You've been very active, haven't you? <laughs> every day. Yeah. I, I pledged when I took this job to answer everything. Um, so we try and scour the papers every day uh, and the press and answer so that uh, people know what the PLP's position is on any specific thing at any time. And there's a page on Facebook you can go to and check if you want to know what the PLP believes on a particular issue. So you're um, generally improving the public relations of the party? Yeah, I, I don't think we're there yet because, of course, we don't have the kind of uh, salubrious atmosphere for PLP statements at the moment. Uh, there appears to me um, an attempt to suppress the PLP's opinions in public uh, by the mainstream media. So we're fighting that hostility. And, uh, but, you know, by and large, we think that, I think that uh, after a year and a half or so, uh, people in the party are finally getting their sea legs back and, you know, are starting to stand up again and have confidence that we can actually do this. The statements, though, are just coming from yourself and the leader of the party. I, we don't hear uh, too many others. Well, Dennis Anna Martin from time to time. Right. Well, there's a functioning, there's, there's a functioning shadow cabinet. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, I think the last statement, Mike, Mike Darvel, for example, just did a statement as a spokesman on education. Right. Uh, with regard to what happened at C.W. Sawyer. And uh, so we got the press after that, but of course, uh, apart from your paper, I don't think uh, anyone paid much attention to it, except that in the Guardian story, it was buried deep down in it. So obviously they used it as the jumping off point, but uh, you know the PLP doesn't get the credit for it. Um, so as I say, there's that. And of course, we, I think the shadow cabinet, the younger ones are in particular learning the art of being in a shadow cabinet. I was really pleased that Joe Beth, uh, Colby Davis, for example, uh, is more active in trying to explain across the country what happened in this recent Frank Smith case. Mm -hmm. And she will be going along with Damian Gomez around the country and on radio and television trying to explain how we see things. Mm -hmm. If there's one issue that um, really uh, upset, uh, caused you to be upset in the last week or two. What is it? Oh, uh, boy, there's so many. Uh, one, one of them, of course, is people taking credit for things that don't belong to them. I mean, this thing about the port in Grand Bahama. I mean, they've not served Grand Bahama well uh, and went up there with this big fanfare after, after the disaster of Oman. Mm -hmm. And now they have this big fanfare about a cruise port. And of course, the cruise port is not their idea. And uh, had, they'd actually gone to sleep on the whole thing. But now they understand the facts are that when you reach year two, you're in trouble because in a five-year term, you know, it takes three years from the time you plan and lay out something to the first shovel in the ground. And, you know, three years is up, really. So they had to desperately run up there and trot this project out. And of course, it's something which, uh, again, they got from, the, got from the drawing board. And then you add that, of course, to the Frank Smith case, which is just egregious, uh, just egregious, the conduct of the public officials in that matter. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another element, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Trump appeals to his base by talking about this war, all right? The FNM appeals to his base by talking about corruption. What is the PIP going to do about that stigma? Well, I don't accept it's a, I don't accept it's a stigma. 
Um, that's the first thing. I don't accept people's propaganda about myself. And this is why I was referring earlier to this question of people getting their sea legs back, because I think part of the success of the FNM in the last uh, general election was they got PLPs to believe this stuff about themselves. And there's a simple principle that I uh, try and tell people. Anytime you hear this stuff being said by them, there's a principle in law, and it applies across the board, hear the other side. Before you make up your mind, hear the other side. I mean, the most, uh, one of the examples that, of course, stands out is um, Philip Brave Davis is accused of giving a contract to his brother. And it turns out it's absolutely false. As soon as he learned that they intended to do that, the whole thing was canceled. But you have these alarming headlines. And then I look at the chat feedback from PLPs. Oh, my. Oh, this and that. And everybody's saying, hang on to find out the truth. They find out the truth. Oh, I see. So that's one of the issues, is trying to get people to understand that if you buy into that, you are actually defeating yourself. Now, so you can go back and check the objective facts with regard to this. And certainly, the case of Frank Smith and the findings of the magistrate in the Frank Smith against the Commissioner of Police case, which just happened, show, they, they, they show that if you look objectively at things, it is not what, you, what it seems. Wait, Mr. Mitchell, you know Goebbels. Goebbels' whole philosophy, if you say it enough, right. people believe it. Right, and that's why I say it back. As soon as, that's why I say to Mr. Jones, as soon as you say something, I answer it immediately, immediately. But, but the, but the uh, underlying problem is, or was, because I think people have got their sea legs back now, the underlying problem is people's lack of confidence in themselves. I mean, during the whole time we were in uh, government, I used to say this. They'd always say, well, why isn't the government saying this, or why isn't the government saying this? But you know, we're the PLPs. Where are the PLPs that write the letters to the newspaper? Where are the PLPs who respond? Uh, it's not just the government, and it's not just the leaders. So that's something that uh, you know, we, have to, we have to work on. And I find that the, our opposite numbers are more confident in the things they're saying, even though the things are not objectively proven to be true. Yeah. On the Frank Smith matter, are you surprised uh, that the government appealed? No, I'm not surprised because I thought that uh, they were embarrassed by the result. And I thought it was an attempt by them to put a gag on the public discussion of the matter. But, uh, you know, anybody who reads these things will know that on appeal, they're simply looking at the record. So the record is what it is, and you can discuss what is the record. And I, and I wanted to get that out very quickly, that, you know, um, I, I think that the, the press here um, and, you know, the government always appeals to these technical rules about sub judice and all this other rubbish. Uh, but the fact is, uh, on appeal, there, there are different sets of considerations having to do with the discussion of, of public matters. And the judge, the, the judge made the findings. They're in the public domain, and so they're free to be discussed. Um, Damien Gomez says that the criminal justice system in the country has been corrupted. Uh, you and others have made um, calls for the resignation of uh, two cabinet ministers, Damien Gomez says. The Attorney General should uh, resign as well. Uh, are you satisfied that um, the system will not be respected until they do resign? Let me put it this way. Uh, during the course of the trial, we knew what was going to come out in the evidence. Uh, just take the phone logs. Um, the phone logs were used to try and show that this lady was calling Frank Smith. When he compared it to the bills that he got, it turns out quite the opposite. Ninety percent of the calls were she was calling him, uh, not Frank Smith calling her. That was part of their case. Uh, the lady comes into the stand. She says, I don't want to be here. She indicates that she's being brought under pressure to come there. And then it turns out that she met with two ministers of the government. And then the issue of the contract. You have the Minister of Health, who approves without the board's authority, approves, goes over the board, approves a contract uh, uh, of uh, quite a good contract for the person who's going to end up being the star witness for the government as part of their propaganda uh, uh, effort on this corruption narrative that they spin. So there were problems that we saw. Uh, when someone 
is a minister of justice, as a prosecutor is. You look at the bar code, and it says how a prosecutor is supposed to act. So the attorney general is the prosecutor. And so he is supposed to be a minister of justice. And that minister of justice is not trying to get a conviction. What he's trying to do is to administer justice to be sure that there is a just result. So in our view, he ought to have seen, or his team ought to have seen, that this case was plainly hopeless. I mean, Bartimus could have seen it was hopeless. And so therefore, you have a responsibility not to take it to the trier of fact, but stop the case. Say, sorry, I withdraw this from the trier of fact, because it simply does not hang together. That was not done. And so I think that's an egregious fault. And then, of course, knowing uh, what the evidence was with regard to the other two ministers. But, you know, the kind of atmosphere we live in today, it appears, because uh, you have 35 to 4, you just do whatever you want. And the whole social construct on which, and conventions on which we build our society just seem to have gone out the window. And that's why I think Damien Gomez is correct with regard to the damage done to the administration of justice. Do, do, do you think uh, democracy is in, 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 in in trouble? Um, <clears throat> if you look at the formal institutions, uh, you would say so. But I think there is a very dynamic uh, atmosphere which is going on in the substrata. But Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell, you got people in the, in, the, in the parliament who do not understand the system under which we are governed? Well, uh, yes, and <laughs> I mean, we could so come, you know, we it, it, to that. It's not only, it, 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 it is throughout the society, sir. Uh, that's so, but you know, democracy requires public participation. And I'm saying what helps in this atmosphere today is the discussion that's going on in the substrata, the social media, outside the formal mechanisms. Now, if you take uh, the formal mechanisms, I was quite surprised uh, when the member for Centerville decided that uh, the House of Assembly is useless, or some such expression he used. On the Public Accounts Committee matter? Right. He resigned and said he found that being the House of Assembly is useless. And I said to my colleagues, I said, you know, well, I was talking to the University of the Bahamas crowd sometimes. I have lunch there on Thursdays. And so I said to them, uh, if you do the math, uh, the number of people who get into the House of Assembly, 39, only 39 people can get there at a time, if the population, so it's about 0.0975% of the population can get into the House of Assembly. This gentleman tried three times to get into the House, got in on the third try. And on the third try, 18 months into the term, he decides the House of Assembly is useless. The House of Assembly is not useless, you know. Uh, Shakespeare says the fourth is not in the stars, but in ourselves that we're underlings. You know, you just have to look at what individual members of parliament did when they were outside the governing structures. That's what the House of Assembly is for. So um, that's why I'm saying the substrata is dynamic. Uh, we are trying to, as a party, we have a module coming up on the 7th to the 9th of March for people who are aspirant candidates. And we are trying to rectify that issue, that you don't have a situation where you have a member of parliament who is parliamentary secretary. The prime minister gets up and says, if you vote against this, you're gone. And you say, it's your conscience. And so you give a long speech, my conscience, my conscience, I'm voting for my constituents. You do that, and the prime minister says, you're gone. And then the next day, you're crying in the newspaper, I didn't know that that was going to be like that. So it's, it, it's an embarrassment. You see, embarrassment. You see, you see, another factor, Mr. Mitchell, is that President Obama, and Jones and I talk about it all the time, was in Ghana, gave a speech. And he said, he, democracy is more than, than, than uh, what happens when you vote. Democracy is what happens between elections. Yeah, yeah it, it, it requires, you know, that's what I'm saying. I'm pleased at the the level of public participation. See, but I, I'm not because the, 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 I listened to his show and I participated in one of his shows, right? And I told, and I told the director of, 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 of education last week, one of the deficiencies in our educational system, there's no civics. 
Well, they do have. People, don't, people really do not understand what democracy is, Mr. Mitchell. Well, well I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I found some interesting things out, you know, uh, but, but about how people focus on what's actually going on in the country. And this is, this is part of the job of an opposition party. Uh, is to try and shape public opinion the way the way we wish it. I was, uh, you know, I just had this accident, and so I was in the hospital uh, yesterday in the morning. And uh, so one of the uh, treating attendants uh, came in and was talking to me, and he said, uh, "Well, I thought I recognized your face." And I said, "Yeah." He says, "So what are you doing these days?" Was the question. <laughs> he says, "You're out of. Are you out of politics?" <laughs> I said, no, I'm the chairman of the party, and I'm in the in Senate. The Senate yeah. And he said, oh, um, well, politics is really quiet nowadays. Not much is happening, right? I said, I suppose you could say that. But, you know, um, it's, <laughs> and I'm saying that, not, not bec you know, it's, it's a kind of funny story in a way. Yeah. But, you know, some consultants uh, told me in my campaign maybe 10 years or so ago that you can't assume that the general public is actually clued into what is going on with all of this stuff. Mr. Mitchell, yeah. I was at a funeral today. Right. I was sitting in the same bench with a lady. She looked behind her and she asked a gentleman, what is his name, meaning me? Yes, right. All right? So the gentleman said, that's Randall Jones. She said, oh, I heard about him. And then he pointed to Jeff Lloyd across the way and he said, who is that gentleman over there? This is what the fellow asked the lady. He said, his face looks familiar. Yeah. Jeff Lloyd, the Minister of Education. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, it's, it, but, but, you know, and, and, and in, in, uh, Sam, in uh, Fox Hill, <laughs> uh, uh, the, there was a, a big opening yeah. of this community center. Millions of dollars uh, spent, brand new swimming pool. On my Facebook page, 64,000 views when the pool was uh, unveiled. Uh, so I went to meet with a family and to have a discussion. And one of the questions they asked me is, what have I done for Fox Hill? So I said, I was kind of nonplussed by the question. So I said, well, for starters, let's say, how about the community center that was built? And they said, what community center? And the community center is less than a mile away from mm -hmm where they live, what community center. So I'm saying, there's a, I, I, don't know, I don't know what's going, what's going on, but there's a dynamic yeah. which is working. And, and one, of the, one of the other things we tried to tell our younger ones is that do not assume that because you create excitement on Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram and all these other social media platforms, because these media platforms are captives to the people who join them yeah. and who have internet services. Yeah. They do not mean the country, they may not mean the country at large. Yeah. And that's, the country at large is what we're interested in. The point is, is the Progressive Liberal Party reconnecting? Um, is there a disconnect, huge disconnect between what you are doing and young Bahamians? Uh, I don't think so. I think that uh, the younger ones in particular uh, have started working on the branch structure. Mm -hmm. I think what's got the ba our base excited at the moment, and excited is a double-edged sword, of course, is that we are inviting people who want to run for office to begin the process of applications, and, okay. the, and the choices are going to be made on the first or initial recommendations at the branch level. Yeah, but fine, but are you connecting? Um, you lost miserably. Uh, it was an abysmal performance of the Progressive Liberal Party in the last general election. Do you think you are gaining any ground at all? Well, again, I don't adopt that language. You know, I think the, the population was manipulated in a way, you know, that uh, caused the result. Uh, the base of the PLP uh, is there, was eroded, I agree. Um, and we're just building back from that, from, from that time. And I think the, when you look at the stats, uh, it's shifting back in the PLP's direction. Uh, you were mani the, the people were manipulated. So uh, then the Progressive Liberal Party, you were not communicating your message effectively. 
Well, I, again, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I just looked at, and, and, and uh, you know, the, the result is what it is, and I try not to litigate the past because it's yeah. done, right? Uh, my view is, you know, I can't do anything about the past anyway, right. but uh, I move forward. But I was looking at Al Jazeera at a, a very uh, detailed uh, documentary on how British public opinion was manipulated on the Brexit result. And it clearly was not based on facts or objective reality. And it was a disastrous decision for their country. And, and you think the same thing applied here? I, I think when you look and see what happened in the last election, you'll see that that, 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 uh, that, that was uh, quite, quite something that influenced the result here. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, there are real issues which have to be addressed. And I think that even though this period is not sexy for many people, because I think many people think that we ought to mass mobilize and rush out into the streets and sweep the government out of office. I think that there is a reconstruction period uh, that has to be done, which has to be done under the radar. Uh, and that's what's happening now, step by step. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, reconnect. Mr. Mitchell, <clears throat> there, there are new realities in the 21st century. All right. And we say on our programs that there's a segment of the Bahamian population which have been marginalized due to their various reasons, lack of education, uh, social status, where you live, right? But that element of our society is growing. And it's reflected, sir, in the increase of poverty in our country. Right. We have a poverty problem here. Well, there's no question. I mean, I, we, and, and, but you see, what, what concerns me, I don't hear anybody from either side speaking to that issue. Well, we speak to the issue. Uh, you know, you can go back the statements, the so on and so forth. I mean, I must have three or four speaking engagements per week, which are all, you know, multiplied across all our platforms. But one statistic that I commonly recite is a statistic from the Central Bank of the Bahamas, which was published last year. And they said 50% of the people in the country who make under $30,000 a year can't make ends meet at the end of the month. And they were asked, how do you make it? And they said, we borrow from our family, we borrow from our friends, and we sell things on the side, or we sell property, that you know, little things that we have. And I, I'm, not a, I'm not a member of Parliament, but I can tell you that I set up over social services and I see the lines and I can count during the course of the day 13, 14, 15 mature men who are sitting around the center of the Foxhill Park with absolutely nothing to do during the course of the day. And I know of at least half a dozen men now, young men, who are in their middle 20s to low 30s who, for one reason or another, simply cannot find a job. Just can't find a job. Um, you go to the Department of Labor, they put in resume after resume after resume, and there's just nothing. And they discourage workers? Discouraged, despair, whatever. But the Minister, the Minister of Labor said that, according to ILO, that doesn't impact the unemployment. Well, yes, of course, that's in the definition. You have to, you have to be looking for work. So, you know, what they say, it's lies, damn lies, and statistics. You know, you could, anything you want to support, you just find a statistic to do. To do yeah. so. but, that, but that's not the reality. No, it isn't the reality. And I mean, that's why we were so uh, harsh in our response to the Prime Minister's comment boasting about unemployment statistics going down in Grand Bahama. And we said, well, where does this fellow actually live? Because all you need to do is go down to the dock on a Friday and see people loading up their possessions, putting them on the dock, because they're all moving to Nassau, four, five, six families at a time. Let's take a break here. Uh, we're going to look at some of the issues um, in uh, a particular kind of order uh, with Mr. Fred Mitchell. We take this break, we'll come right back. <laughs> 